Spring training is officially here. Pitchers and catchers have reported to Goodyear. Shane Weaver is one of those guys there, which means he didn't get traded over the offseason. Imagine that. What he did do over the offseason is go to driveline. What does that exactly mean? Because everybody goes to driveline these days. Let's dive into it. You are Locked On Guardians. Your daily podcast on the Cleveland Guardians. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers join today, and you'll get $150 in bonus bets. If your first bet of $5 or more wins, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Uh, we're going to talk some Shane Bieber today. Driveline released some information. He is, I think, the one millionth pitcher who's going to pitch for Cleveland this season who has shown up to Driveline. Um, it is a guy's going for tune-ups much like a car. We're not talking about eBay motors yet, but uh, this is a situation where, you know, we all know what the issue with Shane Bieber was. He was, he was Kyle Gibson last year. And that is why he is still with this team. He did not have trade value to match what he could potentially be. You don't want to trade him for 10 cents. And then he goes out and pitches like a dollar because 10 cents doesn't help your team. And the dollar is more valuable. And that's where we are though. I mean, I thought he was going to be traded uh, about, two months ago any any moment now right that's that's what i was any told day. he was by the end of the day to the cubs or the reds by the end of the day by the end of the week by the end of the off season uh the off season technically over that's he's in good year I, i'd imagine being a good year we've seen guys traded from spring training before i think the kenny lofton trade happened in spring yeah. training, but that I mean, was Will benson situation. was about this time last year that was before he should have to i mean he might have been yeah. in arizona already but that was a different situation too so yeah I, i'd imagine that if they were going to get an offer they liked, I mean, it would, it would take, again, it would take someone with a, a rotation that gets sacked by injuries in spring training. And they're just like, okay, we need to add him now because we're, our rotation is devastated. I don't know if that rotation really exists. And we're going to talk about some rotations around baseball as we end today's show as well. I think the, the common misconception really about driveline is that, Oh, guys who um, lose velocity, go there to get regain velocity. And, and that's, that's one of the things they do. But if you read around the industry, like, you know, Sarah spent a lot of time there and Kyle body writes a lot. And we, you know, he's a Ohio guy, by the way, he's now on his way to uh, Boston. Yeah. He's going to work for the Red Sox. I think he still works for driveline, but he's cause he worked for the Reds and still worked for driveline that one year. But yeah, driveline helps you regain your velocity. They do a lot of plyo care and help you with your arm health and, and regain velocity for sure. That's that's one of the things they do. But one reason guys go there too is to have their mechanics kind of analyzed too. They do a lot of biometrical work, which also plays into velocity to make sure that you're getting the most out of your body, it's extension, your body movement, and how they can help you clean up your delivery, which, yeah, it's, it might help velocity. It might help health. Um, and they also do a lot of pitch data work, too. I mean, there's a lot of guys that go there to add pitches, to tweak the shape of their breaking balls and things like that, to work on new pitches. So there's a lot of things that go on a drive line. It's just not, you know, the fastball factory or anything like that. Um, because to me, if you look at Shane Bieber the last couple of years, I don't think the fastball velocity matters. They, um, Chris Langan, who is is the uh, director of pitching at Driveline, you know, he posted the the video of Bieber on Twitter, which you can see. I'll, I'll I think I retweeted from the Lockdown Guardians account. Yeah, his fastball at, at Driveline averaged ninety three point two, which would be his best since twenty nineteen. If we're throwing out twenty twenty, which I think we should always throw out twenty twenty for the most part. Um, but if you look at the numbers in the past on Bieber. His fastball velocities never went made him great. Like there is obviously studies that show and, and the results bear this out that every mile or two an hour of velocity you add, you have a greater margin for error. Sure. But we know things like fastballs that don't have good spin or no vertical ride. And, you know, if it's just a straight 98, you know, guys are going to hit it. 98 is 98 guys, guys are training for velocity. So the velocity in factor for Bieber for me was never a, a big thing because, you know, he averaged 91.3 last year at the fastball. 
Hendricks hit 257 off it, which is like not great, but it's not terrible. They slugged 434 off it again. Not great, not terrible. If you look at the rest of his years against his fastball, that's about normal for him. Like throwing out 2020, the best year his fastball has ever had in terms of, you know, hitters facing it um, was, was 2021 when hitters hit 272, 480. So actually, I'm sorry, 2019, it was 231, 440. So last year was kind of on par with what he's normally done. In 2019, he was an all-star and he threw 93.1. So if he gets back to that, which that's close to the numbers that they showed at driveline for his fastball, that's great. But his fastball didn't get hammered last year. What, what happened to him was times through the order, lack of a third pitch, health. That's the biggest thing here is I, I don't know how much, how much can driveline improve your health? Like you can go there and you can clean up some biomechanics that might help and you know, plyo care, maybe there's some some things you can do for body care and arm care that can help. But that's the thing for me with Eber. It's not just the fastball velocity. And we can get to the curveball metrics in a second, too, because that's a big one. But it's health, right? Like, how much does driveline improve health? We don't have anything on that, do we? Because that's really what it is for Bieber. It's health and the return of that curveball to me is well, what it's just going like... to make him different. You know, it's the ability to miss bats, which which went away last year. It's like the, the guy's... I get that they weren't hitting for a high average, but they also were contacting on the fastball. He wasn't able to, there was no uh, swing and miss when it came to just about any of his pitches. And it's, you know, it, he became a different pitcher last year and, and health is a big deal. It's two of the last three years. He's missed significant time with injury. And it very much seems like a case that ever since that first injury, he has been scared to death to use that curveball. And we have not seen it. And remember, there's been two two missing half a year with injury and no surgeries or anything. It's just been rest and heal. So I don't know if he just doesn't trust the heal or what's going on. We'll see what happens. And I mean, here's the exciting thing. If if Bieber goes out and pitches really well, they, you know, and they're playing well, great. This could help them get to the postseason. Uh, if he goes out, pitches really well, and the rest of the team doesn't do their job because hey, this was a bottom 10 team in baseball last year and they have added nothing to their roster, then, you know, you have a valuable trade asset. And the one thing we've seen is, frankly, you get more value for pitching at the deadline than you do now. And and I know people talk about draft pick compensation. problem with draft pick compensation is it doesn't matter to most teams. Like the Dodgers get a fourth for Bieber if they trade for him now as opposed to midseason. And the fourth is not as valuable as the uh, $6 million dollars <clears throat> they save against the luxury tax. So there's so many moving parts in these deals. Uh, and now that it's not a first round pick for every player you offer the qualifying offer to, the value is not as big of a deal. So I honestly think that a, you know, you look at Chase Burns, the fact that he's making close to 20 million, I want to say, like, I bet Baltimore got more if they waited. Chase uh, I, Burns, I, he hasn't been drafted yet. <laughs> Chase Burns, uh, Corbin Burns, Corbin. <laughs> you know, wrong C Burns, but, uh, no, I gotta talk about Mark Wiley being the pitching coach next. But um oh, but it's one of those things. It, it, you look at Jordan Montgomery, his name is up because of how he pitched in the postseason. He got almost as much as Burns got last year at the deadline. Like it's a similar cost deal. Just minus we've, the draft pick, yeah. Yeah, we've seen a lot of teams get similar value out of players, if not more. So listen, this is a situation they can you can only benefit from. Because you're not getting hardly anything from Bieber right now. I've said it before, and Cubs fans are like, go trade for him. I'm like, no, that's why Cleveland's not trading him, is because the value return is low. They're not going to give him away, and teams are not offering a lot. He's not free to a good home, but teams are acting like he is, and that's why he's still in Cleveland. So you hold on to him. You see if he can bounce back. This is all encouraging data. You like that he's going out. He's always been a tinkerer. He's always shown up with things he is working on. He is always messing around with things. For some guys, that's a great thing. For him, uh, I don't know. I can't really say. It feels like a lot of those things have not really uh, turned into things of use. But it, this is great. He's going to a place. He's getting some additional coaching. He's working on some things. And I mean, if the, the curveball is arguably his best pitch when he is in peak condition, so if he comes back and he trusts it and he's willing to go to it, he could be an entirely different pitcher. Yeah, that's the, that's the biggest two things. It's it's the health and that's the curveball. And those two things, I think, are intertwined because 
his curveball usage was never higher than it was in 2020, and we throw all that data out, but the, the percentages are there. In 2021, 20, his curveball usage was his highest of all time, even higher than 2020 at 31.2%. It was his second most trusted pitch. And ever since then, that's when the first injury popped up, right? It was 2021. And since then, he has just not gone to it. The percentage continues to decrease every year. So either it was a, a grip thing, you know, that was when they cracked down on the uh, spider tack and all that stuff, or it's just a, a, an elbow or shoulder comfort thing. All those guys broke. that got cracked down on have found out a way to come back. Like we've seen them all. Yeah. Like Garrett Cole, did he win the Cy Young? I can't remember. You know, so the big awards I don't really care about, so they go over my head pretty quickly. But it's like all those guys who are, had the biggest accusations on him have all figured out ways to get around it. So if it was that, I feel like, pipeline would have let him know yeah yeah so i don't know i mean the return of the curveball is to me what makes the biggest difference it's like yeah the metrics from driveline say it's it's as good as it was in 2020 which it was a great pitcher in 2020 regardless of whatever we think of the data it was a great pitcher in 2021 when he used it when he was healthy so but he's got to he's got to come back healthy and he's got to rely on it so all this stuff is great you're right it's great he's going to driveline it's they've done great things there's no guarantees obviously but um he has to be healthy and he has to be able to rely on that curveball. I mean, he was a two pitch pitcher last year, basically with a fastball and a slider. His cutter was horrendous last year and the slider is a great pitch for him. You know, he'd be a guy who would benefit from a, a, a pitch mix change, decrease your, your reliance on the fastball and up the usages on your slider and chain curveball. But again, that's, that's probably related to health and um, how, how much he trusts his arm and how much he trusts those pitches and his grip on those. So, the driveline stuff's great. It's encouraging, um, but you know you need to see him show up to camp and get to the season and and see how those pitches come out and see us pitch mix. So we'll talk a little more about Bieber towards the end of the episode. The Guardians rotation. We've got forty man roster talk, uh, a trade rumor from last week that was just you know kind of silly, and uh, some other guys that are headed to Guardians camp already that are actually there pitchers. So we'll talk about them in just a second. Passion, drive, patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED lights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it is easy to turn your car into the MVP, the Silver Slugger, the Cy Young Award winner, the uh, Rolades Relief Pitcher of the Year, whatever that award may be, and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply, eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. Speaking of the right parts, the Philadelphia Phillies think that Emmanuel Class A was the right part for them, and they they could use some relief help for sure. Uh, there was a rumor on uh, Philadelphia Sports Radio ninety four WIP from again. This is a you know whatever you want to call it. Anyway, um, I think Howard Eskin's kind of a name. I don't know. He's a he's a radio reporter in Philadelphia. He's been around for a long time. I don't really know much about him, but anyway, he had this report last week that was. Uh, Actually, it was like five days ago now that Cleveland or that Philadelphia was interested in Manuel Classe, but they didn't want to give up Justin Crawford. That was the holdup, apparently, or, or the, here's the issue. One of the players Cleveland wants is Crawford, he says, and they're not giving him up. Okay, if I'm the Phillies and I, if the holdup was Justin Crawford, that's kind of ridiculous because I would give up Justin Crawford to get Emmanuel Classe if that was the holdup. If that was the holdup on the Phillies, then I would do that. Um, my problem is... Justin Crawford is not good enough to headline a class A trade. He's because, the third piece. Yeah, because Cleveland's looking for if, if Cleveland were, and it's not going to happen now, I don't think. If Cleveland really were going, were would trade class A, they'd be looking for immediate help right now. And I don't know what the other pieces are, but Crawford being the holdup would be silly because I don't think he can headline a trade. But other than that, I just don't see a match on the Phillies anyway. Like no. so I, and this is probably nothing we're talking about because it's not going to happen, but like, it's just kind of, this is why the rumor was silly in the first place, because like 
okay, Mick Abel is not really their type. I know he's a top prospect, but he does he has strike throwing issues. Andrew Painter's not gonna pitch till next year at best. He's missed two years not, in a row now. Yeah, and they're not gonna trade him and Cleveland's not gonna go for that. And that system just doesn't have anybody else I would be interested in. I, I just don't see a fit. I, I read an article that was literally like, hey, the Phillies are interested in Class A. They should make a trade. And then it didn't mention any trades. It didn't talk about how it happened. And, and anyone out there talking about Nick Castellano, it's like oh. he's not that good. He A, he's a DH anymore. And B, look at his every other year data. He is a guy who's been so up and down. Like he is... We're talking about someone who's getting into his 30s. Uh, let's see. So he had a 112 weighted runs created plus last year. Year before that, 96. He he had thirteen. You know, the same person. Splits, he had 13 home runs. Like you're not getting power necessarily out of him. You know how many times this guy has passed 25 home runs in his career? Four, and he's been around for 11 years. Not even half of his seasons. He's not adding power. He can't play the field. I get he was an all-star this past year, but he has been for his career a off and on guy. You can go through the data. 112, 96, 138, 100, 122. Like there's been this up and down with him. And guess what? This is the down year as he's entering more into his 30s. And I thought that was a, a silly statement from someone. Uh yeah, Philly's minors are weak. It's extremely top heavy. Justin Crawford is not a top. He's barely a top 100 prospect if he is one. He he was solid in in low A a year ago. I mean, he's so far away. It's it's it, to me that felt like someone getting a bad rumor and running with it, and in, in that it wasn't fact. Like it was the silliest statement on so many sides. It makes no sense. Yeah. And if you look at you talk about your point about Nick Castellanos, by the way, had a lot of had some good years in Cincinnati, where again the ballpark is small. His home road splits last year, 139 WRC plus on, at home. Philadelphia's ballpark is small. On the road, 80, 80. I mean, I know I know we're desperate here sometimes for offense, but 80 is not much better than what Cleveland was doing out there last year, except for Miles Straw. Like, 80 is not better than Will Brennan. It's not better than Ramon Laureano. Like, it's if, if even if it's not, I mean, we would take 100, right? We, but it's not yeah. 100, so. So yeah, it was just a silly rumor, and I I don't see like you said someone felt like one of those rumors. Someone was like, "Oh yeah, we talked to Cleveland about Class A." And, yeah, well, it's it's right up there with uh, Mor Morosi's latest one. Like teams oh, like Class A, teams teams would like to add Class A. Like I mean, he literally good. listed like eight what? teams, and then there was but there was no anything to it. It was just like I'm yeah. going to talk about the eight teams that could you. It's like baseball teams can use a good pitcher. Was pretty much his tweet. That was his tweet. Baseball teams could Breaking. use a teams good pitcher. Teams are interested in good players. Yes. So, teams some like teams pitchers should. who pitch. Wow. Some like, some teams want good players. Not all teams want good players. The Oakland A's have not been interested in good players. Cleveland hasn't added any. Oakland spent either, more season than Cleveland. Yep. There you go. Yeah. Cleveland has not added either. It's it's been Austin Hedges and if you want to throw in Scott Barlow there. Um, Boring man situation. So we, this might take a little bit of time to dive into, but I've seen some stuff online about, you know, Cleveland's 40 man roster is full and Daniel Espino could be a guy they add to the 60 right away. Nope. To clear up a 40 man roster spot. And if we think that, you know, one of these relievers who came in on, or these pitchers who came in on a non roster invite, like, you know, uh, Tyler Bede or Beatty or, or uh, Tyler Zuber, Anthony Bond or Anthony Ghost or Carlos Carrasco, any of these guys, they have signed to a non-roster deal this offseason to a minor league deal. If they want to add them to the 40-man roster, yeah, they got to create space for him. Here's the thing, though, the Spino. They, I know it's full, and it's you have to look around for some some moves to be made to do this, but when you put a guy in the 60-day IL, the Major League 60-day IL, you start his service time, and Espino is not going to be ready to pitch until, like, June, July, you know, around there. I don't think Cleveland's giving him a half year of service time when he hasn't pitched in two years and starting that clock, especially with how special he could still be. They're not going to take that risk. So, and, 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 you know, Kyle Manzardo, that thing too, he's not on the 40 man roster. If they want him to open the roster or open the air on the, on the major league roster, he's not on the 40 and you have to create a spot for that. I just don't think a speed is going to be it. They've done this with some guys, Carlos Vargas, who was not yes, very good. Dylan Baker, Dylan Baker, but, not, you know, these are guys who projected probably as relievers, even when they did this. Like they were the last, they were the last guy on the roster, basically. Yeah. yeah. 
as much as I like Vargas and, and Baker. And I was big on times, Baker. Baker I was, was a big guy for me back in the day. I liked them both at different times, but yeah, those were some lean years, the Dylan Baker years. <laughs> yeah. He he went to like the Dodgers one year and they said in, in Dodgers camp he was throwing like 99. I was like, wow, how about that? Good for him, but then he never never made it, unfortunately. But yeah, I just don't see them putting it's being on the 60 day IL. No. I just don't see that proposition happening with, with him at this point. You still have points where you're overflowing, right? Like, you know, just looking at all these infielders, like maybe you decide it's time to get rid of a Tana or an Angel Martinez off the roster. We talked about John Kenzie Noel being in a weird situation with this. Angel team. Martinez yeah. is not getting DFA. Uh, Hunter Gaddis. I mean, I know he's a depth guy, but they've added a lot of other depth. He's someone who could be at risk right now. Uh, you know, they, they have some guys. There's some ways you can go with this. I they can also try to make a trade like they did a year ago. Um, you can also just return Devison de los Santos if it's like, hey, yeah, it's not gonna happen. Um, but I, there, there's some ways to go. They're not gonna accelerate the clock on a guy whose ceiling is the highest in your minor league system who has the potential to be a legit number one. Endo story, yeah, yeah, they'll have to find other ways to do it. But I've, I've seen people talking about. Because the you know the Dodgers have already added guys to their sixty. They've got like they're all five guys, guys that they can yeah. to their sixty. But they're all but they're all major leaguers. They're not yeah. prospects. Their clock's already started. Spinos is not, and they're just they're just not going to do that. I know there there are there is something to watch out for in the minors. They are doing IL restrictions this year, where you can only have a certain amount of guys on the IL in the minors because teams have just abused the heck out of this this in the minors. You just throw a guy in the IL to put him off the roster. Sometimes uh, it's used got, for suspensions as well. Uh, yeah. guys would, would do something and get suspended and then they would end up on the IL. That, so I, I know multiple stories of that happening. Yeah, that probably can't happen anymore no. unless you have a very clean injured sheet. So, uh, you know, they're cracking down on that kind of stuff. So I, I can't imagine them. They're going to have to put a speed on some kind of IL in the minors, obviously, but he is not going to be on the major league one and um, he'll be on the minor league one. He'll think of a spot there. What? Is the ceiling of the Guardians rotation? I've seen I've seen some people also talk about um, MLB Network talking about the best rotations in baseball. Could Cleveland match that? There's a lot of things that we could talk about in terms of what the Guardians rotation could be. We're going to discuss that here next. Before we get to that, get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel America's number one sports book. Right now, if you are a new FanDuel customer, you're going to get $150 in your account and bonus bets from FanDuel with any winning $5 money line, $5 bet, not just money line, $5 bet. So go down there to FanDuel.com and sign up for a new account using lockdown or FanDuel.com slash lockdown, place a $5 bet. And if that wins, that $150 bucks is going into your FanDuel account. You can bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same game parlays exclusive props more you can bet the Cavs getting back in the wind column after a loss to the 76ers or you could throw some money down and Jose Ramirez a winning MVP Shohei Otani is not in the league anymore can he do it right now the odds are plus 2200 so throw down a dollar on Jose Ramirez and win yourself $22 come uh, October if he wins the MVP or do the NBA fast bets do those and get your five dollars and uh, get that 150 bucks with that five dollar bet win. So visit fanduel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot. FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NBA. All right. So MLB Network, um, if you're watching on YouTube, put the graphic up. Um, talked about notable quote unquote um, American League rotations. And I saw some people online saying, well, the Guardians are better than this. The Guardians are better than that rotation. And Here's the thing with the Guardians rotation. I disagree. <laughs> I think on paper, like let's just say on paper, the Guardians ceiling of the rotation could certainly be in this discussion. Yes. There's a lot of caveats. So if you're not, if you're not watching on YouTube, it's all caveats. It is it's all, all caveats. caveats. <laughs> if you're not watching on YouTube, it's the Mariners, it's the Orioles, it's the Yankees, the Astros, and the Blue Jays. I would Posit that the Guardians upside of the Orioles are kind is, of a little weird, uh, just because Means is coming back from injury and like yeah, the Yankees like the one is weird too. Like, like I don't, I don't think Cleveland should be up there, but the Yankees and Orioles should not be up there. I don't even think the Astros rotation is that solid. Verlander is getting older; he showed some signs last year of decline. Um, 
Hunter Brown is not a really great strike thrower. I know he's got good stuff, but I, you know, they're not, not great. Uh, I, I think Jose Aquiti is Hunter is Brown. Of, you know, Sarah's had a really interesting piece on why he's going to break out today. Side note, I thought about you as I read it because we had this discussion yesterday about why he is primed. He is one of the five breakout pitchers for the year based on okay. data. Maybe I'm wrong. We'll see. And then the Blue Jay is like Gosman's great. Barrios bounce back. Chris Bassett's fine. Kikuchi's good. Nobody knows what the heck Alex Manoa is going to look like this coming year. But on paper, the Guardians rotation looks great. But there are so many things here. Like we spent the first half of the show talking about Bieber, and he's just got to be healthy. Like all the drive line stuff doesn't matter. He just has to be healthy and trust the curveball. That's a huge caveat. Tristan McKenzie, you know, he's his career high at innings was 2022 20, at 193. Before that, it was 143 in the minors. He's got to be healthy. And we love all the the young guys. We love Tanner Bobby. We love Williams. We love Allen. But sophomore slumps are a thing because teams adjust to your stuff and you have to adjust back. It's the cat and mouse game. And we love the talent level. But, you know, they have to go through a full big league season for the first time and have a major league hit major league hitters now have a book on them in the majors they faced them before so they have to adjust back to that um and they have to stay healthy too not that any of those guys really have any major league injury concerns but um counting on all three of those guys to have great first full major league seasons probably one of them's going to hit some bumps in the road and then you know the injury questions with either mckenzie if if perfect Scenario existed where all those guys stayed healthy for most of the year. And Never happens. The, the, yeah, and the three and the three sophomore pitchers, you know, battled. Just battled the health. Just having good health does not happen. Like you know, <laughs> it's that year they had Millwood and Scott Ellerton in what 05? Like that is something that has never really, happened and, and will never happen yeah. again. Where they use like seven starters all year. Like that is just. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, on paper, again, it can match those rotations without a doubt. In some some respects, like I said, the Yankees and the – what was the other one? The Yankees and Orioles. The, I don't know. The Orioles one looks really good to me. I literally like Kyle Bradish. I mean, I've been high on Bradish since his New Mexico State days. I mean, I literally – he was one of those guys that I was the high dude on in his draft class. I thought it was terrible when they traded him for Dylan Bundy. Los Angeles Angels strike again. But it's yeah. like – you know, it's interesting because basically we don't have a dynamite rotations. Like the Dodgers, I think is probably pretty good. I was surprised they don't make this list. <laughs> well, this is, is AL just, only. Oh, AL only. Um, but it's like, I, I, I don't know. I look at that list and I, I get it. There's a lot of question marks for a lot of teams right now in the league, but there's the a Dodgers- world where at the end of the year, Cleveland is in that discussion. And there is a world where that rotation blows up where yeah. Two fifths of it end up needing soldier. It should not yeah, end up needing some kind of surgery before the year is done, and you know other players see their variance luck go poorly. Like it, it, it is one of the. This is the least safe rotation we've seen in Cleveland in a long time. So fair. This is really premature in terms of season preview talk, but um, is it a fair statement already to say that the Guardians will go as far as the rotation takes them? Or pitching in general? No, because they need basically they're going to go as far as youth takes them because they need those either the young arms. Well, they have the a young, young pitching staff. staff. I know, but that's what I'm saying. It's more the youth because the pitching staff can be di- dynamic, and if they are as terrible offensively as they were a year ago, then it's not going to matter. Like they have to because it's not just that they were the worst team in baseball; they were the worst team by layers. And it, they have to find ways to improve. They need some more young players to step up. They need, you know, one of the young shortstops to be above average. They need, you know, Jimenez to bounce back. He's still a young player relative to all things. They need some of these young outfielders to work out. They need just to be used to hit. I think you're kind of missing my question, though. I think I'm, I'm saying they will go as far as rotation takes them because the we can't you can't count on the offense and. I don't think even if, if they have the best rotation in baseball and the offense is what it was a year ago, they're still not making the playoffs. They're still going to be second in this division. I, I don't think. Right. Cause they're relying on the rotation to do all the heavy lifting. That's my point. I, I know. I'm just saying that the rotation alone isn't going to be enough. It, it doesn't right, matter. So they will go, they will go as far as that rotation takes them. That's what I'm saying. The offense is, is what it is. Pitching is what is going to take them. Then as, they're not as far going as they anywhere. Go. Because the offense, well, yeah, that's the case. It. That's what I'm yeah. saying. So, yeah, I, I guess for me, it's like if for this team to go somewhere, it's got to be that all that youth steps up. 
because the pitching was was relatively okay a year ago and the offense was putrid. And if youth doesn't step up in terms of hitting and continue to step up with the pitching, then again, for as much as I want to be positive and people are going to get mad at me for being Mr. Negative because that comes up in the comments, they had a bottom 10 record in baseball last year for a reason. Like, you know, it wasn't just bad luck all the time. It, it, there is a world where this rotation is dynamic and those young hitters step up and we see where Rokio has been a top 100 prospect for a while. And Gabby Arias proves why he's the centerpiece of the Clevenger deal. And they have to figure out how to get both those line, guys in the lineup and Brennan bounces back. And all of a sudden this offense, I'm not saying they're number one in baseball, but it's closer to the middle and the rotation solid. And Hey, this is a playoff team. Like that is not outside the realm of possibility. Is it likely? No, but is it something that could happen? Absolutely. 44 days. So spring training is officially open with pitchers and catchers being there. Uh, so we're 44 days away from opening day. My favorite 44s in Cleveland history. I'm going to go with, I really liked Richie Sexton when he, when he was here, um, but you got some good ones here. You have some very random ones. You have Sal Fasano, Carl Josh, Pavano, Bard. Josh Bard. We have uh, John Axford, all-time good guy. Mm. Chris Sedan. Uh, currently, Xavier Curry occupies that number. Going Nick back Goody. to history. And Nick Goody, going back to history, you have uh, Neil Heaton is on there. Yeah. Um, Ken Lattier. Phelps, Tony Parrish, Chica, Reggie Jefferson. Oof. Ken Hill, what a great trade that was. Kevin Mitchell, not a great one there either. Um, I'm going to go with Richie Sexton, my favorite 44 in Cleveland history. Brian Sikorsky is on there. Wow. What a great yeah, name. It's, it's it's an interesting list. Uh, Brandon Moss just made my all-time, you know, that the, everyone's doing those best. <laughs> Last Brandon Moss made the worst list uh, when I yeah. went through and made the worst team possible. Well, surprisingly, Bobby Bradley did not. Uh, we have Carlos Colazzo coming up soon on the Wednesday. show. That's a Thursday, fun Thursday thing. and Friday's episodes. Thursday and Friday's episodes. Hopefully, we'll uh, have that to discuss. And we always have so much to discuss because it's always a fun time to sit down and talk baseball in the the cold, cold. At least pitchers and catchers are in the warm, warm, and uh, we will soon have actual baseball college baseball to discuss as well so thank Woo. you all for joining us remember to rate and review and download daily thank you for Mary being Kurtzness. an everydayer and go go guardians go